make sure this is okay. It should be recording. Welcome to Rob's weekend video watch party and strat ideas for the upcoming week. It is January 24th, 2021. So with no further ado, we'll hear from the master himself. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Smith, the Smith and the Black Channel here at Ticker Talker, and we are coming into the last week of the month, and that means exhaustion risk coming into January. So, uh, f by time and by price, SPY does go 312 and just dribbles into the highs, and we've been living in exhaustion risk. We could use a little triangle out, and so uh, it just goes two yeah. down on the day. Uh, cool. If you go to the daily, you're going to see this here. Higher high. The lower low, your upper level exhaustion try. So hopefully we can get them to try back through. That would be nice, but uh, no evidence of that just yet. QQQ, inside day on the highs. <laughs> so there's that. So uh, that's how we start off the week into exhaustion risk. Apple takes care of business too. And on the weekly does this here. 212 reversal back into the high and now just exhaustion risk and apple new highs and we got earnings coming out we got a lot of earnings coming out so apple coming out this week taslers all that so be aware of that we've got we're gonna be probably trading a lot of gap in earnings let's go to small cappers small cappers still driving higher nice month for them here but exhaustion risk we'll see if we go all the way top or try or not but a broader average is a little quiet uh, if we go to tlt doing nothing it is still month and downer though so if you go to vxx also snoozer doji doji month doing nothing go to the dow jones diamonds a little better uh, two months to the upside and just but this exhaustion risk is just wearing on these things and you can see this here upper level exhaustion try like so here's your broadening formation for the diamonds boeing stock you can see this on the month here <laughs> look at that not doing much so um you know we'll see if you go the weekly at least you'll see something like this and so we'll see how price discovery starting over again and the, the giant mother bar that we know about so uh, if we go to a unh a little bit different of a story here unh does go month and upper and didn't quite exhaust and that's with xlv here still month and up and so we're gonna look at ANTM here trying to set up the rev strat coming back through and if you go to the daily you'll see this just keep an eye on this try to see if they want to rev strat back through something like it is so I'd keep an eye on this try and ANTM Cigna also trying to get some out and trying to get some out so Keep an eye on this too in the grander scheme of things. There's your Cigna. Uh, if we go to uh, Molina Health, Molina Health potentially rev strat back up to reconfirm the month and upper here. And if we go to GH, GH just got some exhaustion risk and Maybe a shooter if they want to bring that in. We'll see. If we go to the trannies, trannies just sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> so trannies do do this, though. On the daily. Micro try them out if they want to come back up for RevStrat. Uh, I'd be um, UPS. And UPS weekly. Monthly, we know it's still RevStrat to the downside. You just run out a month. So weekly would be RevStrat back up if they want to start bringing that up. Of course, you can watch that with FedEx here um other than that not too much going on over there csx and the rails got hit last week and that's needs to finish off the 322 uh norfolk southern still here that was still a 322 so it has not completed to come all the way back down through so we'll see if they have continued choo-choo weakness with the union pack coming in as well uh xlu nothing to see here folks <laughs> no, here. Monthly stock inside month in the middle of all this mother bar. Uh, if we go to FAS, got some exhaustion risk here, short term. Um, weekly, 
here. So potentially, they can finish this off would be nice. The 3, 2, 2, and come all the way back through here. We'll see City Corps close to doing that on the weekly. Um, you know, JP Morgan just goes into exhaustion risk. But still, the 3, 2, 2, and until that resolves, hopefully we can get these things to triangle all those guys out. If you go to Visa, just an upper level daily try to keep an eye on. Like so. And your lower lows, we'll see how it handles that. Uh, lending tree. And lending tree just kind of chopping around here, but uh, still doing this on the month. The 3 2 2 back up through the try she goes. So we'll see if anything comes of that. And let's go to XLE. Ugh. XLE. Inside weakers. So not much going on over here just yet. Shrink that down a little bit more. XLE OIH. Just goes two down. All right. So, so not much going on there. Chevron joins the crew as an inside week. And if it breaks to the upside, you might get the rebreak of the, the inside month. Fang is your winner here. F A and G. And you can see this nice and green takes this out, is what we we're looking for. Got it. So you can see the difference here. Uh, between most of the other uh, weekly, still inside weaker here, but you got a nice bright green month there, so that's a little bit better. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, Axon, how you doing, buddy? Inside week there, and inside oxy, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see. You do have SM Energy potentially hammer counter shooter here. He used to be somebody coming off the basement. We'll see. XRT retail, been blasting here. The month it's taken off here, and so the thing about that is you've got uh, is you still have left over a lot of inside weeks, and I'll get to that in a second. The Walmart going inside month almost for sure. Target Momo hammer into the highs, and now on the weekly potential hammer kind of shooter if they want to take it up. Costco. Costco, no weekly hammer if they want to try and come back through this stuff. Still red on the month, but running out of month. If we go to, like I said, there's a lot of inside weeks in all these things. Are you, guess here, GES, Gap Stores, Kohl's, all these guys going inside. You've got Abercrombie, an Abercrombie inside Momo Hammer, and it is inside month and up still. And it used to be somebody if they want to bring that out of the ashes. If we go to Best Buy... And Best Buy coming back through here. You got a nice three going on here. Now we'll see if that can do this. Momo Hammer the weekly back through this try. If we go to AAP, AAP potential can finish off the 322. Two. Is outside, then up, then back down, right? And if, if that sets up, you either get the re break of the month to the up, sorry, or set up the rev strat downside. Genuine parts here. Setting up potential rev strap month or, or hammer counter shooter weaker to the upside. If we go to Dillard's DDS, DDS uh, having a nice little month, had a nice little week. And if you go to the monthly, you'll see this trying to come back through the greater try, like so. So we'll see if there's more to it there. Hasbro and Hasbro. Not too much on the month, but you do have the Hammer Counter Shooter Weekly to see if they want to try and accelerate up into this stuff up in here. These guys. If we go to Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply. Here's your try. Made it all the way back up. Now an inside week to see if they want to expand that or drop her back through. Walgreens. Walgreens inside week. Still inside month and up. And then you got your daily here closer to a 2-2 back through the previous range if they want to bring that up. Wingstop, just having a nice little month right here. Goes daily, and just right to the try. <laughs> we'll see if there's more to it. Because you are nice and bright green on the month. But nice try you got there, Rob. Thank you. Uh, if we go to, why not, GameStop. And GameStop, 
uh, uh, good chances of inside days and all that kind of stuff. But oftentimes they stay a little wild before they go into the grind, into the, um, you know, into the insideness and all that kind of stuff. So uh, still moving around. We'll keep an eye on that one. That's hot potato. Go to IBB. IBB. It's kind of stuck up into here. Did have somewhat of a nice month, but we know that's kind of fragmented on who's who that's going to be. So we go to AERI. AERI is still creeping up here, and one thing we look for is them used to be somebody, and now it's starting to pick up just a little bit, so I'd stay on that one. ALNY we've known about for a while. Still inside month to the upside, and now an inside week. If they got any more, she got any more in the tank. Uh, if we go to Amgen. Still inside month and up, like so. You go to HQY. HQY, just having a nice monitor here, and you can see this, your lower low, your greater try. They want to keep coming up on this thing, like so. If we go to ISRG, ah, ISRG, big bread now in the month after getting hit last week. So we'll see. Nice ugly day coming back through all this stuff. Would be nice if we can keep hitting that. Star Surgical going the other way. And this is inside week with the inside month to the upside still. And. And little guy T R X C. Oops. It used to be somebody and starting to starting to walk up here a little bit, and this thing used to be up uh, way up there. So we'll see. Sometimes it's just warming up. Uh, a B C. A B C. Try goes them out. Comes back up through this stuff. So on your week. It's going to set up the rev strat weaker if they want to keep walking up this thing. Uh, if we go to XLK and attack. XLK, more exhaustion risk, and starting off inside day with the Qs, SMH. Was a little weaker, took an inside day down. So SMH has got a bunch of little shooters here if they do want to bring them in. We'll see. Uh, if we go to uh, Facebook. And Facebook went 2-2 two, two back up, so potentially setting up RevStrat month and RevStrat quarter if they want to bring this thing back up. So uh, we'll see. Uh, no new signal there. Uh, but you got, uh, we'll see how that finishes off. Amazon. Amazon still stuck. Doji, Monther. Um, so <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, Netflix. Blast off. And no Netflix. Here, just exhaustion risk, two-day inside pattern. If they want to come in for some gap fillage in the village, we'll see. Google, Google's a nice, uh, doing nothing but potential 222 day after taking that inside weaker up to new highs. Uh, if we go to NVIDIA, still stock, someday, still stock in here. So uh, the daily did do this, triangle out and triangle out now inside day to see if they can finally get out of all this stuff. Um, and we can go back from here, dink, to the line. So inside data start off NVIDIA. Let's go to Autodesk. Autodesk on the week here on 3, 2, 2. And so we got some room to finish this thing off down here, 293.05. That would be nice uh, if we go to Amba. Amba just screaming here and... Uh, the old used to be somebody coming back, so having a nice month. And if you go back out, see that been a little higher. So we'll see if we can go take out these guys. Uh, if we go to AMD, do nothing. Outside month, so that's going to give you your daily try like this to keep an eye on, see if it starts breaking for either either one of those sides or fails one side and comes back in the future. Appen. And Appen, D2. The two, 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 bam. We're confirming the inside month, trying to go back towards the highs. If we go to BB, <laughs> BB, yep, and BB in the month, if you go back, really, so you used to be somebody here, but shrink that down a little bit. But 
You'll see that monthly trial like so coming after these guys over here. If we go to Serious Logic, Serious Logic, just like a bunch of things. Uh, a lot of these semis have these little shooters, and LRCX has one too. If they want to try and bring them in a little bit, we'll see. Like I said, a lot of earnings coming out this week. Intel, whew, all the way back down, shootage. So if they want to bring this thing in and some gap fillage in the village. Uh, if we go to MU, and MU comes back in. Still bright green on the month, but you're running out of month and you got potential rev strat weaker. If they want to take that out. If you go to Corvo, Corvo, just more shootage. Roku, more shootage and exhaustion risk. Then you got all the 3D printers still blasting here. SSYS, Triple D, XONE, and VJet. All these guys just ripping here. I think we need to print some stuff up or something. TWLO. Yeah, just an inside week right near the all-time highs. So some exhaustion risk, and we'll see. Vive. Getting a little in the, late in the month, but you do have an inside week, and it's been doing all this. Look at this. Each month, each week, we would like to buy you. We would like to sell you. We would like to buy you. We would like to sell you. We would like to buy you, but now you're your insider. And the th good part about that, even though it's later, is like you would have machine gun, a pivot machine gun on the monthly if they can get that thing cranking. Home builders ripping here, ITB and XHB both going here. And, um, well, yeah, it's, I forgot the, this is the Home Depot Rev Strat month there. Lows here, inside month to the upside. And just a little doji week to see if there's anything more there. But a lot of these things are just blasting into the highs. But you got stuff like BZH had a nice week. And this used to be higher. And so it's coming back through a bigger try you'll see this here coming back through this thing so we'll see if there's more in the tank and that thing LGIH still coming up to hammer kind of shooter month and on your daily gives you this try that we're keeping an eye on here potential two two boom uh, just a few more we go American superconductor and once again, another it used to be somebody a lot higher. And just having a nice run here. Triangle lay out. There's your 2-2 two, two here. And then still would be inside inside week. If we go to Borg Warner. And Borg Warner. Month. Inside month and up and still coming up here. So we'll see if there's more to the greater try here. And starting off as a inside day. Beyond the meat. And beyond the meat. Still looking to see if it goes one bar rev strat month. Here. All right, and now you've got your 312 weaker. Let's see if they want to finish the job. If you go to DraftKings, DraftKings stuck here, but inside week, and here's your try to keep an eye on. It starts breaking either side of that thing. If we go to EXPI, and I believe they're splitting soon, but just anything that has nice long green bars on the week and month, I'll be at exhaustion risk. Got a Fiserv. Fiserv, just inside week here, and if that breaks, you can reconfirm this two two month reversal here. If we go to FSLR and solar, solar FSLR inside week, which we saw Sun Power just rip, and CSIQ took the inside week last week. So we'll see if that continues. See if that can continue. You can watch run here and run potential two, two, two weaker. And Sedge fighting back here too. Sedge inside weaker. We'll see. Uh, if we go to iRobot, iRobot trying to come through here. So a little bit of short term exhaustion risk, but uh, once again, been a lot higher on the monthly in the greater try. If we go to Lemonade, Lemonade. Potential hammer counter shooter week if they want to take this thing back up. Uh, pluggy. Plug goes inside week with fuel cell. Uh, if we go to space. And space. Just having a nice little monster here. And still inside, but uh, still just walking up here. And it holds this gap here. And so we'll see if we can go after these guys here. Stampy. Stamps. 
Late charge on an inside month to the upside. Tiger. Tiger, just nice long green monthly bar, and now an inside day. And Tilray, still inside month and up. And now inside week. You can watch all the weed with that. Let's see if you can take that out. And Tesla. Earnings coming out this week. Exhaustion risk inside inside week. So I believe that's Wednesday. So be aware of that. And this is what exhaustion risk looks like right there as we await the earnings. All right, that's going to do it for today. Like I said, a lot of earnings coming out. So we'll be probably be hopping on that gapper list. All right, it's going to do it for this week. I'm Rob Sue, the Smith and Black Channel here at Ticket Tiger. Alrighty, let me get my charts up here. Okay. Get this out of the way. All right, I've got a list I'm going to run through pretty quick here. And then as always, we'll open it up to questions and charts that y'all want to take a look at. So first up, I have ARKK. I've talked about this in the morning, uh, you know, pre-market plans. ARKK is an exchange traded fund, which simply means it's a mutual fund that trades like a stock. But for those of you that want to trade Tesla, want to trade Zoom, or want to trade options on any of those shops, Spotify, that might be out of your price range, this particular ETF has all of the high-flying names I just listed, plus like 20 more. Um, so if you're looking for Re Regeneron's in there, Baidu, you know, the list goes on and on. I think Tesla is its single biggest holding. So if you want exposure to any of those names, this is a good way to play them. I do like this on the daily chart because first we have full-time time frame continuity, but that looks like a nice setup for a 2-2 reversal back to the upside. Tesla will go through too. My guess is because Tesla, I believe, reports this week, we'll probably get that run into earnings unless, you know, something funky happens. As, as we all know, anything's possible. But that's why I like ARKK. It's got some of the other names I'm going to go through in it. Uh, then we've got Beam. This thing doesn't report until March. We have Inside Day. We are right on that 21 EMA. And when that happens, you'll generally get an explosive move one way or the other. As Rob always says, the proper way to play this thing is to wait for it to break. Um, so to the upside, that's right around 100. To the downside, we are looking at uh, 92.67. The, it has some serious range for a hundred dollar stock, you know, over 11 points. So the setup, the setup I'm thinking will happen that I'd be expecting to happen. Doesn't mean it will would be that pivot machine gun back to the upside to bring us into full time frame continuity. Once again, Let's just double check the weekly. Um, certainly we had a sizable looks like inside candle inside I believe so uh, bearish candle last week but there's something that that y'all need to be aware of when you have a white or in most most of y'all's case a green candle followed by a red candle I, I call this on my chart because I use black and white and a fig newton pattern you generally will see an up candle on the other side of that so I, I'm expecting that on the weekly and, uh, but that daily setup, I really, really like. Uh, BLNK, this guy could go either way. I mean, if you look here on the 30, I call this type of deal. And for you, those of you that are in the chat room or watch some of the other videos, you see me do this a lot when price doesn't go anywhere. I kind of call this a pop out of the box, meaning at some point price is going to have to choose what direction it's going to go. It doesn't mean that'll happen tomorrow. But if we look at the daily, 
we got this nice little inside candle so you can trade the break. And this could be a possible weekly swing for you, you know, especially if it breaks to the upside, we've got clear magnitude. It doesn't report again until April. So um, break on the upside 46.54, break on the downside 43.79. Moves about six points for a under $50 stock. It's pretty darn good. Um, beyond, I do like the look of this weekly setup. Lots of times when we see a nice big three candle like that, and then we get a little inside, you'll see continuation with the nice big candle on the other side of it. It's right near that 21, so there could be an explosive move. That way it could come back through as well. But if I'm looking at the daily, it certainly looks like buyers have stepped in off this pullback. And so I'm looking for it to bust out of this area, hopefully once and for all this week, and then continue that move back to the upside and bring us back to full-time firm continuity to the upside. Then, then we have Ford. Uh, this is on here for a couple of reasons. One, we've got a nice small inside candle, trade the break, and that's to the upside, 1170, to the downside, 1134. Ford is not an overly big mover, but it is an I used to be somebody stock. So if we look at the yearly chart, we had that nice green hammer. It is trying to resolve here to the upside. Just double check earnings. I'm looking at this more for a longer, longer term swing play. Yeah, Kathy Wood, California for a while. Yep. Um, reports beginning of February will probably get a run into earnings and then we'll see how she plays out. And if it's decent, I mean, there's a lot of room back up and you're not going to get killed if you do a longer term swing on this. I used to be somebody play. F cell. I like this. This is also if we're looking at the yearly and I used to be somebody play. Look at that chart. I mean, could it go lower? Yeah, it can do whatever it wants, but it's certainly got some room to move up. I do like on the daily here. We have that little pullback buyer step back in. I'd like to see that 2-2 two -two back to the upside. Again, for a 17 some on dollar stock, 2.26 for the range ain't bad at all. Uh, we certainly have magnitude back up to 21.28. And that could be you know, a decent swing play for the week. FedEx. We've been talking about this off and on in chat for a while. It does look like we've started to form a low, a high, a higher low. We haven't gotten a higher high yet, but we're right near that 21 EMA. So explosive movement one way or the other is what I'm expecting. And if we look at the weekly, I do like this as well. Got a, a nice up candle, a little doji. To me, that's a thinking continuation type pattern. And even if it gets back up in this 266 area and fails, I do think for this week, that could be a real nice, not only day trade, but possible swing trade as well. FSLY, um, this guy, Reports beginning of February. We're not quite back up. Here, let me make this chart bigger past, you know, this region. That'd be your first target. And I do like this type of pattern. This is a nice possible 2 2 reversal back to the upside with magnitude. We have that full time frame continuity going in our favor. All of that I really like. If we look at the hourly chart, Again, if I do draw my little box, we already started a pop out of the box. So we already have a little candle that's starting to pop out. We could see an explosive move. FSLY, when it wants to do its thing, can 
and really take off. So like that. Uh, Fubo. This is a real nice, you know, and these are all kind of pivot machine guns back to the upside. Someone had told me I can't on my software determine when this thing reports next, but I think someone in the room had said it's in March. So we definitely have time where you've got that full time frame continuity to the upside. We've got this little pop out of the box right here that already happened. So we have a low, a high, a higher low. I'm looking for it to make that higher high. And we'll see how far she wants to go this week. Uh, you know, the weekly, it would just be, you know, there's more magnitude to take out two weeks ago here and then obviously continue back on up. Halliburton. This is just on here as an I used to be somebody type play, not saying necessarily you want to trade it this week, but we do have this nice hammer. So far this month, it hasn't done a heck of a lot. If we can get to where it's over that 2481, tons of room back to the upside. On the daily though, you know, I always say a change in direction has to start somewhere. We do have that full time frame continuity, except on the weekly and a real nice hammer candle. This guy doesn't report until April. So you got some real potential for a nice long swing. It's not a huge mover. So for those of you that are newer on the swing front and don't want to get killed, this could be a good trade to take a starter position in. JKS like this, another one of the solar plays. We do have that inside candle, so the proper way to play it, get this out of the way, is to wait for a break in either direction, and then you could swing, you know, whatever direction it breaks for the rest of the week. So on the upside, we got 68.54, downsides right around 64.75 or so. So the break of that candle in either direction, I like that for potential short-term swing and maybe longer because it doesn't report until, um, until March. Lemonade. So here on the weekly, whenever I see the shooter counters hammer, I, I kind of call it an inside pattern, meaning if we look at the close from the previous week and then the close from last week. Yeah, it did close higher, but lemonade can really go. I want to say, let me double check the range on this guy. Yeah, this thing can move anywhere from 17 to 20 points. So being that we're still kind of stuck in this mother bar, it really hasn't done too much. And this to me just shows that it's thinking and trying to decide what it wants to do. So I would like to see this, especially after this real nice candle on Friday. Um, you know, in the full time frame continuity, real nice trade. This thing can really go potential weekly swing back to the upside, especially because it's earnings beginning of next month. I like that trade a lot. We have Momo. This is kind of along the lines of an AMC or a Ford. I put it on the list because you have this I used to be somebody, you know, we're way at the bottom of its potential range. If we look at the daily, this is kind of a hop out of the box ish setup to me. We've just kind of been floating around, not doing too much, but this candle from Friday looks pretty darn strong. So if it holds that at the open, certainly we have magnitude up to 16. Not saying it's <laughs> Clearly going to do that tomorrow. I mean, it's, it's not a huge mover, but another guy that you could swing for a little bit longer and not overly worry about getting killed. Netflix is on my list, uh, mostly because of this gap. We'll have to see whoop, what she um, what she wants to do tomorrow, but that this particular three bar pattern doesn't look overly bullish. So we have a little bit of conflicting information. We have one day off, you know, one day down and then every other time frame is green. But with this big gap, 
you never know, we could get that 2-2 continuation back down. So we're just watching to see how that behaves. Um, and what I'd be interested in is a possible short to get near filling that gap or at least coming back uh, part of the way. NVAX, uh, this has been doing seemingly nothing forever. Um, I have it on the list because it does look like it's trying to do something with this candle. What we'll see, we've got a low, a high, a higher low. We don't have that higher high yet. And certainly if we draw a little box around this, you know, I'm kind of looking for another pop out of the box type setup for it to come and start going back through the range. If we look at it on the daily, or I'm sorry, the weekly, I don't mind this little doji-ish spinning top type, type of candle. To me, that looks like a thinking candle with possibility for that continuation to the upside this week. PDD. This guy can really get going too. We have this inside day. So I'd be looking for a break to the upside of 172.79. And then your downside break would be that wick is at 168, uh, 168.69. On the weekly, what I see potentially happening is a shooter counters hammer and then continue back to the upside pattern. So this, this candle doesn't, as it stands right now, indicate to me that we're necessarily gonna come back through, but we'll see when we wake up tomorrow how that happens. And certainly we do have some conflicting messages here with red on some timeframes, green on the others. So you never know, maybe that candle is telling us it's gonna continue back down. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Tesla, and I am actually holding this. I got in Friday when it started finally showing some buyers step up and I really got into it oh, as a short term play into earnings. Uh, since we all know Tesla can fly, I'm not risking a ton. So if I lost it all, I really wouldn't care. But um, I think we've got potential for a nice two to reversal in the earnings. I've, I showed that they report on the 27th, which is Wednesday. And got W. This crazy stock can move a good 20 points. And we have an inside candle. We've had uh, a recent sell off. I had talked about it quite a bit in chat as a, a setup. And I wish I had taken, I think I was talking about it right in here, maybe even a ways back, but when this thing wants to go, it can really go. Not reporting till the end of February. Retail's been pretty strong. We'll have to see if that continues into this week. Break to the downside on the candles, 292.58 to the outsides, 305.10. And either way, you've got nice pivot machine gun potential. And then lastly, I'm also holding Zoom. Um, Zoom doesn't report till the beginning of March. It finally looks, you know, we had this little pullback here, like some buyers were trying to step in and push it higher. I clearly, you know, I'm up till March, so I'm holding it to see how far it will run up, assuming it does, into earnings. And we do have full time frame continuity, except on the weekly. If I look at the weekly, again, to me, this just looks like a little pause for a continued move higher. And yep, that is my list. So there were a lot of good potential setups, um, hard to choose what's what. What do y'all wanna go through? What questions do you have? So you got about 15 minutes. I don't want to keep everyone too, too, too long. You guys are so quiet. You can type in chat or just unmute and let me know what charts you want to run through. 
Jen, our GLS is a, something we've talked about before, but we yeah. ha I haven't. I just was wondering if you see anything there. Sure. Yeah. Going on. Yeah, and this is definitely an I used to be somebody. So nothing wrong with that. Those are kind of fun. Um, couple things. If I look at the weekly, sometimes you will find this is the opposite of the Fig Newton pattern. I call it the Oreo cookie pattern, where for whatever reason, when you've got a white black candle followed by a white candle, the next candle is oftentimes black. Doesn't mean it will be. You just see it happen uh, quite a bit. But if I look at the daily, we just had a little mini pop out of the box type of deal right here where it just kind of didn't do anything. And then all of a sudden some buyers stepped in and they did again, they smacked it back down, but, and, and we don't have the full time frame continuity. However, this to me, looks like a pretty, on the daily chart, a pretty decent setup with some magnitude back up to that 154. And clearly if we're looking at this guy, you know, the monthly or the yearly, there's plenty of magnitude, plenty of magnitude. So. I like this chart. Um, I like the 195 because here we have a nice big, is this outside? No, a nice big two bar bullish engulfing. And then we've got a smaller pullback bar, which once again to me is just thinking. And it really didn't pull back more than half of the body. So most of the things I'm looking at, I, I think it looks like a, a great potential long, you know, assuming that we have a decent open and that kind of, and there's no bizarro news overnight. Could uh, you take a look at, at FLR, John? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. You are welcome. So FLR, since I used to be somebody, really like this pattern a lot. This is, so, you know, there's two, two reversals and in technical analysis, they call them morning stars, but a morning star is kind of a special two, two reversal, but that's what I'd be looking for on this. I like this a lot with the hammer for a long, and then let's, yeah, I like the weekly as well. I really do because we've got this nice big green candle and then a little thinking candle. And this is a fantastic pattern, you know, for a two continuation back up, we clearly have magnitude. Um, what is FLR reports? So that reports end of Feb. Yeah, yeah, it's a, that's a real nice chart. I like that a lot. Um, love this nice big hammer with some confirmation of buyers continuing to step in. We're inside on the 195. And the hourly, I think that was, was that the, the 130. So yeah, I, I really, I like that a lot. I, I love where it's positioned here. This could be a very explosive move. You'll find when, when you get right on the 21 EMA, and again, I know this is a technical analysis thing, but other traders are looking at it. So it can be a helpful tool when you see it kind of went down, turn around, went rent right back up. It's right on those moving averages. You'll often see a very explosive move. So th this looks like a fantastic trade. I like it. What else guys? How about CSIQ? CSIQ, Canadian Solar. Let's take a look at this bad boy like the daily. This is a real, real nice pattern, kind of like we saw in some of the weekly charts and so forth. But when you get a nice big candle and it takes a little break to think, I mean, nine times out of 10, you're going to get an equal sized or similar candle on the other side of that. Really like that daily chart. Everything looks great on the other time frames. 195, we've got this tiny little inside candle. So, you know, over that 6347, if you're trying to play it safe. Weekly looks strong. I mean, there's not a lot not to like. Um, 
The only issue obviously is that exhaustion risk concept. And let's double check this guy and see. Reports not till the end of March, four point range. Beautiful. I, I like that a lot. I mean, that's a lot of range for a 63 point stock. We got lots of time. Sometimes these stocks, once they start getting toward the 70, 75, they just start running because there's, you know, it's like every whole number. We're at 63, so next whole number is 70, then it's 80. Once you're mid, mid to higher 80s, then 100 is kind of the goal. I'm not saying it's going to get there, but uh, but yeah, I think that's a real pretty chart. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that one down actually. I like it. What else? So everything Express. I've, which one? Express. What's the? Uh, it's um, EXPR. EXP. That one is like a GME. Type oh, of okay. Form. Oh, gotcha. Okay, cool. I think I told um, our room, but I'm actually working uh, on a scanner project right now. So I found a guy who's got a live scanner, meaning you don't go in and manually scan anything ever. It has 400 criteria, standalone criteria you can scan for right now. Yeah. You can combine the 400 any way you want. I'm having him add in the strat signals. So like for me, one of my favorite trades in this year, this is a fantastic example of it is an explosion off of either the 21 or the 9 EMA. When you see something like that and it just kind of hangs out there, boom. I mean, those trees can be massive. So I'd be able to program in, okay, here's my favorite strat setup. And then here's the other criteria that go into it. And I talked to him yesterday and he said, you know, we're, we're gonna work out all the kinks first because I wanna make sure that you know, I've got, let's say, four different scans that I kind of rely on because right now I'm playing with a boatload of them and then you get into overwhelm. I don't want to have, yeah. you know, totally just, totally yeah, totally exactly. right. so I want to have, okay, here's four that I know are amazing. So thank, the reason I'm going in this long-winded story is trades like GameStop Stop, or um, AMC, it pulled up AMC, Momo, like a bunch of, they, it, it finds them. You don't have to sit there and try to find some obscure deal. And if you're- Yeah, a, that one came up in my scan actually during the day. Did it? Yeah, that's it awesome. just popped up and I'm still tweaking it just like you are. And I appreciate yes. the fact that you're working on that. This is awesome, man. The 400 yeah, scans, There's on, 400 man. now without the Strat and, and they, you could combine them yeah. into, nine and the guy who who made the scanner is a trader and he has a live support room so let's say i i roll this out with him and i find like my top scans let's say you just that, that's just not your wheelhouse that that's totally cool you want to trade strat with um the average to range and that's how you trade it yeah, you can go right to him he will help you set it up then you can beta test if it doesn't work exactly the way you want. He, he is the nicest man. He's a trader himself. And it's just, you know, to have support from some person like that is-, is That's awesome. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. That's exactly, I'm, I'm tweaking it. Like, yes. you know, I just started learning trading altogether like three oh, months good for ago. You. Good for you. But, uh, you know, obviously I've been learning from you and everybody else from this yeah, track. But that being sure. said, like I've been tweaking my scans and long story short, we're on the same boat. I yep. totally, totally understand what you meant. This is awesome. It's exciting stuff. So I, I do like this chart. The thing is, with such a massive candle, I, I would kind of think for Monday, we'd get a thinking candle and then maybe another explosive move. Um, yeah. But I do like the chart. I mean, these, I used to be somebody chart. You used to be somebody here for sure. Yeah. <laughs> how, how could you not like those? You know, I, I'm a... I'm a pullback buyer anyway. You know, I just feel a lot better getting into things after a pullback because to me, I feel like the chances are if it's a good stock are, are in my favor. Not everyone's that way. A lot of people only trade those kind of pop out of the box or, you know, breakout type of trades. That's just not my style. So charts like this, I absolutely love. I absolutely yeah. love. I think that's cool. Fantastic. 
Thanks well, for everything you do, Jen. You do best. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks for um for showing up. So I have someone to talk to. <laughs> I always look left every time. Every time I'm like, I'm thinking Jen. She said That's look right. left. Always look left. Look left. Always. <laughs> well, and it's funny. I mean, I think for all of us, depending on who you learn from or whatever, those little things that people say over and over. For, for me, I was a little dense in the beginning, so I needed someone to like say the same thing over and over and then it sticks in your head so absolutely i think that's good stuff you're the best thank you oh you too thank you you're so okay you're gonna make me blush um what other charts guys how about teva t-e-v-a yeah you know what i've looked at that chart off and on i have let's see what she's got for us certainly looks strong on the weekly this is also a nice I used to be somebody type of chart. If we look at that yearly, I mean, come on, you know, it's funny after last year because you kind of thought there weren't any of these guys left, but I'm finding more and more of them every day. If we look at it, the new, the new batch of them are showing up, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love that. And as I mean, nice strong month coming in here, there's still some magnitude here and pretty limitless, really. If it keeps going, when does Tiva? Does this bad boy report? So yeah, beginning of next month. So assuming the market stays strong, there's plenty of time because it's not until I think the second week of Feb. So we got a good two and a half weeks or so and plenty of magnitude. I would think tomorrow, most likely we'd get some kind of inside day. I could be wrong because every now and again, usually these stocks just want to run, right? and continue up but I, I like the chart a lot i also want to show you something here because this is another one of my favorite setups when you see it's even prettier if this is a black candle you know where it's three they call it three three black crows if that was black it's not but i'm just saying so you'll recognize it. it's similar but that candle is white you get three candles that come back down right to almost that previous magnitude. Again, nine times out of 10, and this works for the downside too. You're gonna get that nice big candle that pivot machine guns it all the way back up. That's a beautiful, beautiful chart pattern. I wish I would have seen that on Friday, but um, but yeah, I like the chart. Looks good. I like the I used to be somebody setup. Absolutely. Just um, you know, be cautious tomorrow in case we get a, a smaller inside day so a question on Tiva. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty new to the strat information. Sure. Is that a potential on the daily for like the the triangle triangle they out, I think you call it? So the triangle they out here back to trend was these three guys coming right back down, most likely. Okay. So tomorrow I think and I could be wrong, either one of two things is the most likely scenario. Either we're going to get another real nice strong candle to push it up or because we took out three candles in one or almost did. I mean, that's maybe a hair less, but almost. We get kind of an inside thinking or doji candle before another explosive move up, kind of like those weekly charts we are looking at. So those seem like the most likely scenarios. A, the triangle the outs would be, you know, like this guy here or this guy or this guy. So if I were drawing, you know, your broadening formation here, um, this is almost its own broadening formation because this candle, gosh, if it's not a three, it's, it's awfully, awfully close, right? So, be drawn at something like that it's almost its own triangle but we got that full time frame continuity i'd expect it to continue up it's just you know it's a pretty big size guy this this stock usually has a 60 point range let's see sometimes it's hard to tell with the lower price guys because i'm so used to looking at yeah so it did almost double you know in one day i would think kind of thinking inside and then boom maybe continued back to the upside tomorrow or um, Tuesday. Oh, Tuesdays have been weird lately though. It used to be turnaround Tuesday and now it's like, I don't know what I want to do Tuesday. <laughs> you get a quick move out of the gate and then it just screws around. 
it's it's been weird on Tuesdays lately. But what Thank I, you for the explanation. That was awesome. Oh yeah, of course. What uh, what other charts, guys? Do you do y'all have Neil? Somebody wanted to look at Neil. I think Neil Inside Week. I did look at that. I like the daily for continued pivot machine gun. I think we're probably going to get a run on these because of Tesla. Um, let's look at the weekly. Yeah, yeah, this could be a real nice, you know, assuming we're strong, 2 2 reversal back up off kind of that inside week scenario to take us back into a higher range. We're right below 67. This thing's going to want 70 and potentially higher. Um, Neo reports not until mid-March. And it's got a good four-point range. And we all know it can move more when it wants to. So I think that could be a real nice, even potential short-term swing for the week back up to magnitude. This is one, you know, typically if I'm day trading, I'm buying in the money or at the money options, there is, you know, where I'll buy out of the money options is, you know, something potentially like this, where I'm saying, okay, it closed at 61, is it 6195? Yeah, 61.95. It moves four and a half points. It could easily take that out on the week. I'm going to buy an out of the money option at 67 or 70 because it's got this full-time current continuity. That's an exception where I, I would be willing to buy an out of the money option when I can see a clear magnitude and I think there's a likelihood it could get there. Uh, but but I do like Neil's chart, I do. And then you look at the uh, 30 minute. I mean, this isn't quite pop out of the box, but it didn't do too, too much right here. So certainly room for it to kind of blast off, especially these last two little guys, you know, on the 30 minute didn't do, do a heck of a lot. So I like that. Get rid of this. Ah, oh, my charts are wonky. What else, what else do you guys have? What else are you dying to look at so we can all make some good money this week? Or is that enough ideas and you've now got brain overload? <laughs> See, part of the reason I want the scanner too is one of the hardest things to do is when you make out your list and you've got, I don't know, 10 different ones you're looking at for the week, you can program your own list into the deal. So you can say, okay, these are the 10 I'm watching and I just want to have a little scanning window up on my chart that I can show exactly what's going on with them that they're moving and if they're triggering what I want them to do, you could build that with your custom list. You know, so the whole idea is you never miss a trade again because once you set that up, it's right there and you're good to go. Do you ever trade leaps? <clears throat> um, you know what? I this is kind of a funny story. So last January, I bought a leap on General Electric because it started moving up, but then I, I had to get out because of everything that happened. But I have, unfortunately, I've never. Something's always happened where it's interrupted the flow and I had to get out of it. But um, but I like those kind of things for some of these, I used to be somebody stocks. I really do. So I was looking at leaps for FLR, looking at January yeah. 22. So what do they look like? What's, what's, yeah. what's Look what's at the, the, the 35 call for January of 22. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up. Yeah, because I, I was thinking that exact same hey thing. Hey, guys, what do you mean by leaps? What, you're out a year. what do you mean by leaps? So you're out like a year, Ray Ray? Like 12 months oh, plus? Okay. Yep. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's see what those look like. Oh, they're cheap as I'll get out. I mean... Yeah, it almost looks fantastic, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah, it sure does. And the thing is, you start doing some of these and have success, that's where you can really make the big money, even on a stock that doesn't, you know, like Walgreens Boots. I've been harping on this forever and a day. And 
this is one, you know, of course I didn't take it. And then I got ticked because it went way up. And for me to feel comfortable, I need that pullback. So I'm not actually looking at this. It just reported. And I mean, you want to talk about limitless pivot machine gun back to the upside, you know, goes on forever. That's that's another one I'm looking at. Definite, I used to be somebody. Look at all that room and all that magnitude. So so absolutely, there is several of these I'm looking at. AMC could be one. WBA could be one. Halliburton. You use like an option profit calculator to kind of, judge where you want to be um no i i just use strat I, I really do you know once the and i tend to with something like this i would probably buy because it's going to be cheap anyway something that's in the money maybe i do a, a small lotto at magnitude and doing that i would go back and say okay what's the average to range multiplied by you know number of trading days to see if that's even possible. And I do that with, you know, like the weekly swings. I always go back and look at that average true range and say, okay, is it reasonable to buy something at this magnitude based on how much this thing moves? But um, that's kind of how I do it. But yeah, so, there, yeah. What do you think of OPK? I'm, I'm interested in some of these smaller ones now. Uh, Rob had a few too. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of fun. I mean, there could be some weirdness, but as long as you know that going in, who cares? You know, as long as you're not, you know, putting your life savings into it. I like some of these things at times. And we do have, we had a little pop out of the box here. We did have a little comeback. So we have a low, a high, a higher low inside day. All we need to do is get over that pivot machine gun style back up. What is the weekly? Yeah, and this this to me just looks like thinking because you got that shooter counters hammer pattern. So for continuation back to the upside style, I like that chart. I do. What does this bad boy report? OPK. Apple Health, huh? So that's end of February, not a, not a ton of range, but sometimes these things just decide they want to blast off. So that could be a fun little deal, you know, that's your thing, you're not going to get killed. Yeah, maybe a, some more similar with more range would be the SM Rob talked about. Which one was it? SM. Oh, just SM, let's see here. SM Energy. Yeah, and energy in general, let's look at XLE. It's had a little bit of a break here. So, you know, we have this nice little pretty pullback. It could well be ready for a move back to the upside. I really like, oh, I'm not XLE. Is that the right? Yeah, no, that's the right thing. Sorry, I'm getting myself confused. So I, I really like the energy sector in general. Um, that's a pretty chart. That's just an awfully big candle but it could be that it wants to pivot machine gun everything back out right here. And there's another huge day tomorrow, you know, uh, really could, especially when you see stocks get stuck between two moving averages, usually they don't want to stay there for long. So that can create some explosive movement out of that. I call it a trap. Uh, in this case, a nine uh, exponential and a 21 exponential moving average trap. So it could just bust right out of there with some magnitude. Look at APA because that is also, yeah, it's a real pretty chart too. Hammer candle right on the 21, boom, pivot machine gun back to the upside. I bet you all of, you know, XLE, a ton of those stocks probably have similar looking charts going into next week. The hardest part for me right now is trying to figure out what to focus on and um, hoping that we don't have some crazy bizarro gap on Monday, but but we will because it's Monday and that's the way it's rolling. Um, so what what other charts, guys? Anything? Go in once, go in twice. Somebody put tough in the uh, chat. Which one? 
P-U-P? P-U-P? T-U-P, Tupperware. Oh, oh T-U-P, Tupperware. Tupperware. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't even see that. Thank you for making me aware of that. Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic looking chart. Let's look at the different type. Oh yeah, that's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's an I used to be somebody. What's not to look at this on the monthly? I mean, granted, we're not in a new month, but right here, this is a pop out of the box on the month. So going into February, I mean, beautiful. This is just lovely, 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 lovely. Beautiful hammer candle. It's stuck in between these averages. We got magnitude here. That's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This And everything is kind of in agreement. You know, we got the full time frame continuity. All the charts look like they, like buyers have stepped up. I don't get a conflicting sense of information. When does TUP report? Um, it's weird for some reason. Oh, wait a minute. Pulled up the wrong darn thing on my, uh, beginning of March 2.27 is the range, which is pretty darn decent for a 30 some odd dollar stock. That's gorgeous. I mean, you could swing that. Let's see here. This is 38. Yeah. You could swing it back to magnitude. If you like, it's a, a pretty, pretty chart. Wow. Who knew? I don't know if I've ever even looked at Tupperware. It's pretty. JMIA, I see somebody has. And this was on my, one of my top watches for Friday and someone in my room caught it. And I've forgotten who, but I think it was their first day trade and they made 400 bucks off of it. That is, you see, look, this is what I mean. It had a little pop out of the box type deal. Just sat there and kind of did nothing. And then little candle right on those moving averages and boom, you get your beautiful tutu. So JMIA, pretty chart as always, full-time frame continuity. It's at 57-ish, which means that next whole number 60, it's gonna wanna go there. The question becomes, this is an awfully massive candle. So tomorrow, could it blast off just as much? Absolutely, it could. But with the candle that, that large, I probably expect some kind of inside day. Not, not for sure. But um, as far as how it looks for the week, I think that it's a beautiful looking chart. I really do. I think it looks great. I think it's going to want at least 60 and then maybe 70. JMIA. Moves about five and a half points a day, but this one can go when it wants to go. So that, that's a real pretty chart. Um, someone also mentioned CGC. I had looked at this in Tilray and the weed stocks lately have been on a tear. It's inside day. This is a real pretty weekly chart. It's that used to be somebody type of scenario, but same type of, um, Nice up candle, then we've got a little thinking candle. This could be a real big week for CGC. Reports beginning of February, so could certainly see that run up into earnings. Safest way to trade it with these inside is wait for the break. I cheat sometimes and I don't, I wait for the body break. I don't wanna kind of go against what Rob recommends, though, especially as a newer trader. So I'm gonna stick to the book and just tell you you know, the safe way to play it. So this looks like more of an upside setup, obviously with the full time frame continuity. It's also got that pop of the out of the box type of feel to it. And yeah, I, I think that's a, a pretty chart on the break of that inside candle on the upside. It's 3390 on the downside 3305. Real, real pretty, pretty chart. I like it. <laughs> PLTR, PLTR. Yeah, people have been talking about this stock a lot. And so this guy, when do they report? Let me just double check. And that's beginning of next month. 
about a two point range. We did have an awfully massive candle here on the daily, but we are not at magnitude and we are so darn close. So sometimes you'll find even with a massive candle when we are so close to previous magnitude, there, there's a strong likelihood that it kind of goes for it. Whether it goes higher or not, hard to say. Um, it could test that and fail. A lot of times what you'll see is it'll bust out of the gate, kind of overshoot, come back and close somewhere in this area. Sorry, we don't know this is. It, and form one of those kind of spinning top dojis and then the next day really blast off. So will it do that? I don't know, but that's what I see a lot with these type of charts, but it's, it's a very strong looking chart. Um, sky's the limit. And I would say the next, you know, place it would want to go would be that 40 area since it's over 33 ish. So yeah, just caution because you know, tomorrow may not be the best day. It, it, it might be the best day. I don't know. We just had such a big day. So just keep, keep it. Hopefully it hits 40. Yeah, it looks like it wants 40, to be honest. So yeah, I, I, I like the chart. There's nothing really not to like about it. I, I don't get as overly worried. I mean, obviously this is a yearly chart about some of the inside. We're, we're so close to busting out, I would think that it definitely wants that. And then a continuation on to 40. You just got to wait for it. Just have a little caution in how it sets up to go there. I mean, there's a strong likelihood this week it'll get there. It's just tomorrow, just let it tell you, okay, I really want to keep running up or I need a little breather before that momentum kicks in. Enter March 40. Fantastic. Good for you. Yeah, I hope it hits that for you. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap just because it's uh, we're going on a, almost an hour and a half. But um, whatever we didn't get to, you're welcome. Show up tomorrow on Discord. If you don't have the Discord link to the chat room, just DM me on Twitter. I'll get it to you. And we will kind of review everything in the morning and see where the market wants to take us at the open. Have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you bright and early. Thanks, Bye, guys. Josh. You're welcome.